For too long, the citizens of my virtual city have been living in darkness. It's time for that to change. In this video, I'll be dealing with the electrifying problem of bringing power to my virtual city. Power distribution is a classic problem you find in every city builder. Buildings require power. And in order to meet these demands, you build power plants and connect them to your city with power lines. I've broken this down into three separate challenges that need to be solved. First, I'll need to create two new buildings, a power plant and a power line. And power plants need to get power to all of the buildings that need it, so I'll need to write some type of power distribution algorithm. I'll also need some way of alerting the player if a building has power or not, so they know if their city's power grid is working. The first challenge of adding the buildings was actually pretty simple since I was able to build upon code I already had. First, I created two new classes, which would represent my new power plant and power line buildings. For the 3D models, I actually repurposed a model I had previously used as an industrial factory and used that for the power plant. To keep things simple, I'll keep it to one power plant type. After making some slight tweaks to the power line tower, the next task was writing some code to draw the power lines. I would draw two power lines to the edge of the tile based on whether or not there was an adjacent power line. I'd like to eventually update this so there aren't towers on every tile, but this works pretty well for now. Alrighty, strap in everyone because it's time to write our power distribution algorithm. Let's start by defining some variables on our power plant and building classes. The power plant has three different variables. The first is the power capacity, which is the total amount of power our power plant can supply. This value doesn't change and is tuned based on the type of power plant. The second variable is the power consumed. This is the total amount of power at any given time that the city buildings are consuming. And the third and final variable is the power available. By subtracting the power consumed from the maximum power capacity, we get the remaining amount of power available. Each building we supply power to will consume a little bit of the power plant's power until its capacity is exhausted. So what about the buildings that are consuming that power? Those will need just two variables, the power required and the power supplied. A power plant will supply up to the amount of power required, but not more than that. Some buildings like roads don't require any power at all. With our variables figured out, it's time to write our power distribution algorithm. I thought an illustration would be helpful here. Let's start by adding a grid that represents the various tiles of our city. Next, let's add some power plants, homes, and office buildings. Maybe a road for good measure. First, we'll start with a clean slate by initializing the power variables. For the sake of this illustration, let's say that each power plant can supply up to a total of two units of power. We'll represent this as two units of power available out of two units of power capacity. Similarly, each office and home requires one unit of power. Since we haven't distributed any power yet, we'll represent this as zero units supplied out of one unit required. Starting at each power plant, we'll perform a breadth-first search by finding buildings in adjacent tiles. If the building needs power, we'll take some from the power plant and give it to the building. The search expands to adjacent buildings until either all of the buildings have been visited or the power plant runs out of capacity. Let's do a quick demo of what we have so far. So I'm gonna start by laying down a road and then I'm gonna add a couple homes and let's do a couple of office buildings as well. Now, if we wait for these zones to develop, it's not gonna happen. And that's because they currently don't have any power. So we can see listed in the info panel here for each of these buildings, we have the power listed and we're displaying the power supplied out of the power required. So each of these buildings requires 10 kilowatts, and currently zero is being supplied. So these buildings will stay undeveloped until we provide power. So let's go ahead and add a power plant down here, and let's give it some road access so it will generate power. Now if I click on the power plant, we can see that its capacity is 100 kilowatts, and currently zero kilowatts are being consumed, which means 100 kilowatts are available. So let's connect our power plant to our zones. I'll take some power lines and I'll connect them from the power plant to the zones. And immediately we can see that our power consumption has gone up to 70 kilowatts, which makes sense because we have seven zones, each consuming 10 kilowatts. 
and that means we have 30 kilowatts left available. So if I were to lay down, let's say, two more industrial zones, you can see that the power consumption goes to 90 kilowatts. If I add one more, it goes to 100 kilowatts. And we'll let these zones develop. And now we're at the maximum power capacity of our power plant. So if I add any more zones here, we can see that this one here, the power supplied is zero out of 10. So all of these other buildings are getting the power, but there's not enough power left for this building. Additionally, we can see that this building has become abandoned because another building that we placed is now taking its power. So when a building loses power, it then becomes abandoned because its development criteria are no longer being met. So if we were to add a couple more homes down here, these buildings are going to get power first because they're closer to the power plant. And we'll expect to see buildings in this side of the city slowly become abandoned because they're no longer receiving power. That power is going to these buildings over here. Now, it would be a major pain in the butt if the player had to look at each individual building to see which ones had power and which ones didn't. So we need a way of alerting the player when there isn't enough supply to meet the demands of the city. And this is where the idea of icons come in. All the great city builders have this, even the OG SimCity. Each building has a status icon that can help surface useful information to the user. In my case, I've implemented two features now that require status icons. The first is road access, so seeing when a zone or building doesn't have access to a road. And the second is if a building doesn't have power. So if a building isn't powered or is underpowered, we need to surface that information to the user. Now that we've completed our three challenges, let's put everything together. First, I'm going to place a power plant. And immediately we can see that this power plant does not have road access because the status icon is showing. So let's place some roads and you can see the status icon goes away. Now let's place a few residential zones away from the road and the power plant. So immediately we can see that these zones are lacking power. So let's run a power line from our road here over to the zones. And now the status icons have updated to the no road access icon. So while these zones have power, they don't have road access. So let's finish our road by bringing it over here. So we can see our status icons go away and our homes are now developing. So as I was working on this update, there were a few other tweaks I ended up including. The first was updating the lighting. The default view had the player looking at the dark side of the buildings, which made the city look kind of dark and depressing. So I moved the angle of the sun a little bit and also made it more direct, more top-down, to make the shadows smaller. The second was a bit of an update to the UI. Previously, I was using a rounded appearance for the UI with these white icons. After finding the color status icons, I decided to make the same changes to the toolbar buttons. I'm really happy with this change, and I think it's a huge improvement that better matches the aesthetics of the game. I've also removed the majority of the curved edges on the UI elements as it made things feel a bit too cheesy. And lastly, I added this new armored truck model that I found. It never hurts to add a little extra variety to the game. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into how I implemented a dynamic power grid for my city, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're digging what I'm doing, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon. You can find a link in the description below. Until next time, thanks for watching.